Nicholas J. Clayton, an 1800s master architect who is pinned to 47 buildings, mainly located in the state of Texas, that are under investigation today. 11 of the 47 buildings have been demolished, three more burning to the ground, including the electric pavilion that we are being told was constructed in 1882 and burned down the very next year while he is also pinned to the Masonic Lodge building, which was also demolished. Pinned to the temple, located on 816 22nd Street, which later became the Masonic Temple, with his father having the exact same name, Nicholas J. Clayton, which we've seen so many times in the first 61 episodes, reoccurring names constantly, where the mainstream narrative is no longer able to hide and make flaws that nobody cares about anymore. When we are told that Clayton knocked out the St. Mary's Infirmary in Galveston, Texas in 1874, and it's demolished in 1865, knocking a building down nine years before it was constructed. Clayton was born in 1839 and moved to the USA as a small child from Ireland. And I think this is gonna show us how these people like Clayton were inserted into these roles pinned as the architect of old world buildings. Clayton went into the United States Navy, where he was now planted in Galveston, Texas in the 1800s, and was destined to be a master architect in our history books, where he became one of the first professional architects in Texas. And of course, the very first architect in Texas would be the best to ever live in Texas, with zero mistakes ever, and his buildings built to last lifetimes, knocking out the Sacred Heart Catholic Church in 1905, where in 1888, the Jesuits took over the responsibilities of the parish. Clayton was also pinned to the main building at St. Edwards University, located in Austin, Texas, where we are told that the first one was completed in 1888, the same exact year that the Jesuits took over the other Clayton church and they tell us that the one we see today is the second one when they rebuilt it no problem at all in 1903 after a fire where it gets very interesting when they tell us that they hired Clayton to design the structure but when we go back to his works this building is not listed adding to the fire total that we mentioned earlier Clayton also is said to have designed the Beach Hotel in Galveston, Texas. Construction began in 1882, and they just wrapped that thing right up in 1883. One year later. Not a problem in the 1800s, where it was destroyed by a mysterious fire. Just 15 years later, where the cause of the fire was never determined. A 25-minute fire in 1898 and the whole thing is gone. A mysterious fire. Yeah. Okay. And apparently, the Harmony Hall is another Masonic temple that Clayton was pinned to, where we are about to turn this thing up a notch. The Masonic temple had its cornerstone laid in 1882, after they just upgraded their chisels over at Donkey's Incorporated Home Depot. This building was done in two years by Clayton and his horse and wagon team. Completed in 1884, all of this is done before the power tool was even invented in 1895. So we all know who gets the old world building. Taken over in 1884 with Gothic detail and grafted on classic forms in the Italian Renaissance. It was a masterpiece where they tell us that the building was later destroyed by a fire in 1928. Just take a look at the building and tell me if this is something that looks like it would be built in two years today in 2024. I mean, I would say it's possible if we had the very best tools, the most incredible equipment, the best workers that were fully trained, a shipping company that was right on time and all the rest, but for us to believe that this took 24 months in 1884 before the power tool and then randomly burns down is, in my opinion, is complete nonsense. Back then, many of the Masons worked downtown and even as the building burned, they saved the books, said Abby Hughes, a master Mason and member of the Scottish Rite for 56 years. They moved almost everything 
Even the grandfather clock, where we are told this building also held an elaborate Italian marble staircase. And they saved that as well. I'm gonna ask you guys, does this sound like a fire? Or does this sound like a demolition after they removed everything? Let me know what you think in the comments. Do we all trust what Master Abby has to say? Her story seems a little odd if you ask me. When they go on to say, during this fire that burned down the incredible building, with the flames ripping through it, they were able to remove piece by piece this Italian marble staircase. They cleaned it up and gave it a brand new home, making it the centerpiece for the current cathedral. And this was an acceptable narrative for nearly a hundred years, until now where we all know, after everything we've seen to this point, we know that this is complete nonsense and was a destruction process on a building that they did not build. They found it, they repurposed it, and they took all the valuable books and items out of it that belonged to the previous civilization and destroyed the building. We have a lot more to share today. Welcome to episode 62 of my lunch break. I hope you're all having a great day. And if you're new, welcome. <laughs> Thank all of our sponsors over on Patreon. Thank you to FlatEarthDave.com. You can check out his app. I'll put the link in the description and you can use my referral code, MLB. He also has my lunch break on the homeschool section of the app, which is really cool. Thank you to Rebecca K, Don Gaston, Christopher Arietta, The Lady Lacey Show, David and Sherry Ferguson, Edwin Johnson, Chuck Templeton, Joy Lee, PNR, Stephanie Nolan, The Burlesons, Suez KC, Dan Woodle, Corey Franks, Dale, DJ Click Track, Edward and Brianna, Jacob Law, Jim Ribley and Christine Duggan, Kyle Glascock, Tim Rack, William Richard Jeffries V, PKTFnews.org, Regna Saturna, Emerald H, 3D6.Space, Attila Power, Buck Suey, Dakota Dunn, DRob33, Eric Martinez, Ivan Apocteli, Jesse DeLeon, Jim Bro, Kit Kat, Todd K, Edwin Rice, Helmut, Charles Kruger, Daniel Zid, Glenn Gunderson, Pacific Crafted, Skip Ton Designs, Z Dub Custom, Haggard T shirts.com, Meta, Jason Hockberg, Marie C, Roy Schoenholtz, Wayne T, James Alt, Dan McGee, Vince Moreno, Samir Schwery, Stony Stargot, Roz Matthews, Shiba Shaba in the Darkness, Spartan Oneg, and VKH Bonner. You guys are all awesome and helping this channel out a lot. What else they pinned to this Clayton guy? Ball High School in Galveston, Texas, where Ball High tells us that in 1884, Ball High became the second ever high school in the state of Texas. And this was their high school. I mean, do I even have to say anything? Does it get any more incredible than that? This was built in the 1800s as a high school. The cornerstone is said to have been laid in February of 1884. That same year that Clayton wrapped up this building that had a demon fire that licked its way through the rich furnishings, gutted the building and cracked the walls, sending debris flying into the streets where thousands of people watched. Another quote from Abby Hughes, the master mason of the Scottish Rite for 56 years when I'm sure nobody was watching them do anything. Ball High started its construction in 1884 and wrapped it right up in 1886. Two years, done. So Clayton was just knocking these things out, no problem at all. And could you imagine him today, just ripping through these things in our towns today? And could you imagine if this guy actually had power tools? What kind of buildings would he be building today? I mean, I think he would be the Picasso of our time. Just imagine if Clayton had one cordless drill. Imagine him having a saw or a shipping company that had the trucks that we have today. I think this building would have gotten done in like a week. Why do we not have statues of this Clayton guy? We would have a total of zero houses with vinyl siding. I can guarantee you that. There's no way Clayton would have allowed that. Our town halls, our high schools, they would have been palaces. And we know that there was a much more advanced previous civilization that is definitely being hidden from our timeline. A civilization that had incredible knowledge, had proper training, had all the tools and understood how to get these buildings done all over the world. 
and they did not do it while riding around like a cowboy, while in their wagon. When we are told that in 1955, this building just wasn't cutting it anymore, and they felt like they needed to upgrade it, where according to GalvestonMonthly.com, they say that this was the oldest public school in Texas. They say there is a letter that was beneath the cornerstone, buried in a time capsule, that contained the items related to the school's incarnation. And I would love to know what they found in 1955 in that time capsule. And here we're gonna see how incredibly well built these old world buildings really were. In 1900, a category four hurricane devastated this location killing around 8,000 people, which remains the worst weather-related disaster in U.S. history in terms of loss of life. Yet, a year later, in 1901, this school was back in service, as if nothing happened. In 1954, they had a new school built, as we have mentioned. And soon after, they tore down the structure. And since they just can't leave it out of the story, of course, they had built a new building which was later sold to the United Fire and Casualty Company, located on the exact same site. Now, we were also given the synagogue in Texas that has incredible architecture and a very strange past, where we are told that this is one of the oldest standing synagogues in Texas. And all of these buildings that we've mentioned are all attached to the same exact character, Nicholas Clayton. The synagogue was supposedly designed by local architect Fred Stewart, designed and built in the same year of 1870. And then they sell it the same year that Ball High School was demolished in 1955. And they sold it to the Masonic Lodge, with this building, of course, also surviving the 1900s Category 4 hurricane. No problem at all. Now, I'm gonna be honest, I'm shocked they didn't just name this town of Galveston the town of Clayton because he is pinned to everything here. He's pinned to the temples. He's pinned to the high schools, the courthouses, where he knocked out the town's fourth courthouse, three-story stone structure, completed in 1892, when it just wasn't cutting it anymore. And they knocked it down to build a new one, six years later, in 1898. And I'll tell you what, Galveston, your historical narrative is one of the sketchiest narratives that I've ever heard. The first courthouse was done in 1838, 186 years ago, built by nobody. And what happened to it? They tell us nothing. We're just supposed to believe them. And guess what? A brand new one is on the way. In 1857, it's here. Who built that one? It will forever be a mystery, just the way the mainstream narrative likes it. Second courthouse? get out of the way. A third one is coming in, a three-story stone structure, exactly like the fourth one. This one is designed by Eugene Thomas Heiner in 1882. And this one was, of course, not up to the 1800 standards, a time period where we had nothing better to do besides build three-story stone palaces and then knock them down 10 years later, only to build a brand new three-story stone structure in 1892 and just get rid of that one six years later, where that one is partially destroyed by the 1900s hurricane. And the sixth and present courthouse was completed, where this gets strange. The current building was built in 2006. It says that according to multiple sources, but the main source leaves out this other building, where they say that another building was built in 1966, which we aren't being told about, in the official narrative. So this is the current day courthouse, and it's actually the seventh courthouse on this site. We are all understanding that they were not building massive courthouses and knocking them down over and over and over. And we've shown this many times throughout all of the episodes. The first courthouse was a masterpiece from the old world, where the first courthouse is always a masterpiece from the old world, and they replace it with this thing and give us these insane stories where they knock down 10 buildings and only need them for a few years, where I have gone even deeper and found that there were actually seven courthouses, not six. With this box being the replacement in 1966, our modern construction in the last 60 years is pathetic. This box, the one that they tell us, 
was highly regarded for its modern architecture. The governor proclaimed it the most beautiful courthouse in the state of Texas. This guy must have been blind as a bat. This box, built in the architecture style called your basic box style, he called that a modern masterpiece of the 20th century. And that replaced this courthouse. And we all understand that this was the original courthouse, where in any of their seven courthouses, this story would not hold up where they have zero information on the 1838, 1856, 1875, or 1892 courthouses. They don't even have a fake drawing to show us. Nothing. Because this 1898 building was built long before 1898 and long before 1838. This building was here and built by the previous civilization that once lived in this location. They can't just say they had seven courthouses and give the public zero information about them. That is nonsense. It's not true. And this nonsense may have worked for a century, but it does not work anymore. I want to take a minute and thank all of our badge members, all of the Patreons, and every single subscriber. You are all awesome and really helping grow this channel. And now we have possibly the most incredible building that is pinned to Clayton's name, the Ashbell Smith Building, also located in Galveston, Texas and it still stands here today. This is the oldest medical school building west of the Mississippi River, according to the mainstream narrative, where we have photos before 1900, and we have nothing. We have dirt roads, and then we have this palace, and then we have a photo from September in 1900, right after the hurricane, and the building held up pretty well where only the roof took some damage, but the rest of the building looks fine, especially when you compare it to the 1900s construction, where a house we built was completely destroyed. Here are some more houses that we built that are just gone. We have four blocks of our houses that we built completely wiped out. And then we have the old world building, just needing a little roof work. And there are a lot of photos of the 8,000 casualties that I'm not gonna show here, obviously. But for a storm this big to hit, and the building really doesn't look affected at all, shows how impressive these structures from the old world really are. And it's interesting to see the comparisons of our construction at the exact same time, totally wiped out. Oh, and did I mention that this building, we are supposed to believe was built in one year? over 130 years ago. And where is this thing located? Was it like five miles away from the ocean? And that's why it wasn't really affected by this massive hurricane? Of course not. It was right on the front lines, taking a direct hit from the 1900s hurricane. And not only did it survive the 1900s hurricane, no problem at all. It also, of course, was a survivor of Hurricane Ike after being flooded by six feet of water in 2008. These buildings are incredible and built with perfection and not in a year with zero backstory. These buildings hold a hidden past, one that we are working to uncover and show to the world every single week.